conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Includes black men lead, but it also includes our programs for domestic abuse, intimate partner violence, intimate partner homicide, mental health uh, for women and men. Uh, one of the videos we just did on mental health, one of the things people were talking about was the reason that a lot of black people don't see help is they can't afford it. Well, not, first of all, nothing is free. So when it's provided free, it means that it's being supplemented by someone else so that person doesn't have to pay. Uh, when you're asking a professional to just consistently serve people for free, you are, in essence, taking money out of their pocket because every hour they, they work for free, that's an hour they can't charge somebody who can pay. And it's hard to pull people in when you can't say, okay, we'll give you 30% of what you would make normally. We'll give you 40%. We can't say we can give you anything, so we're asking you to donate your time. And I do it a lot, but again, it takes a toll over time because the more you do it, the more people expect you to do it. And that's that. I, I could go on and on about that alone. I'm not even here to talk right now about mental health, but it's a big issue, and we're definitely going to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, because it's having a massive impact on so many different aspects of the black existence that we can't ignore it. Um, I've dealt with it uh, in a number of my books. I've dealt with it in a number of lectures. I'm actually preparing to be the keynote speaker for Delta Sigma Theta uh, for a mental health conference they're having. Uh, and I'm going to share that information with you guys uh, uh, when it all comes out. But it's going to be on February the 11th, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 10 a.m. I don't know if that's Eastern Standard or Central Standard, but we're going to get all that to you. Uh, here's what I'm going to talk to you about. Everybody's patting Stephen A. Uh, Smith on the back because he came out and said that black coaches should stay away from uh, the Houston Texans, that black coaches should run like hell from opportunities to coach in Houston. It's a setup. Uh, he spoke truth, and one of the things that you've heard me say consistently is we have to learn how to receive the message despite the messenger. In other words, we have a tendency to reject valid messaging because we don't like the messenger. Uh, and we do it you know, across the board. I have really, really worked hard to be able to listen to what someone said, to be able to take it and apply it to what I know or what I'm able to discover to determine if what they're saying is valid. And nobody's wrong all the time, nobody's right all the time. So you have to be willing to listen and understand what's going on. And so he makes a very valid point. What he's talking about is the Texans hired Lovey Smith after they fired a black coach 
who was the head coach last year. They brought him on as the interim coach. This is his first full season as the head coach of the Houston Texans. Um, they had traded off at the time, uh, arguably the best wide receiver in the league a couple of years ago, sent him to the Cardinals, released J.J. Uh, White, who no longer wanted to be here. He went to the Cardinals, uh, put uh, Deshaun Watson in the front where he didn't want to be here, squeezed him in, and I guarantee you had something to do with how all this stuff came out. I'm not releasing Deshaun from his role in what he was doing with those massage therapists. I'm saying that the Texans knew about that shit before uh, it came out. They held on to it until he no longer wanted to be here and they then uh, pushed it and manipulated it so that it came out and was supposed to interfere with his ability to play somewhere else and he ends up getting the highest paid contract ever in the NFL but that, that's not why I'm here. Why I'm here is this um yeah it's a setup you got to remember that the Houston Texas but I'm gonna get to Stephen A. Smith and the reason I'm actually making this video in a minute you got to understand that the Houston Texans it was uh owned before his son took over after his death, Bob McNair. Now, if you remember about six years ago, it was Bob McNair in the midst of a difference uh, between the players and the owners where he set up and said, we can't let the inmates run the asylum. Um, that's how wealthy white men view uh, black men who make them billions. Yeah, we'll pay you millions for the billions you make us, but never get it mistaken. This is our plantation and you are uh, our commodity and it was obvious in the way their handler Jerry Jones has done the same thing you know basically sitting up saying you don't have rights if you don't stand up put your hand on your chest when the uh, when the uh, Star Spangled Banner is being played uh, you will be cut from the team uh, again that is an that's a form of, ma of emasculation you are literally saying and, and and I can see there are certain things in, in work you sit up and say you do sitting up and saying somebody has to stand for the national anthem uh, is actually in violation of the very thing that the national anthem is supposed to represent freedom of expression freedom to actually disagree with your country um, and it's crazy that we got there, but we got there. And this was all about the kneeling thing. Remember, all this is about the kneeling thing. But anyway, so we, we can't be surprised that what we're, what we're seeing from the Texans, here's what you got to be careful of. And here's what you got to watch. There's been a lot of noise made over the last, say, eight to 10 years. And then it definitely with Brian, Brian Flores, who happens to be a black man, uh, filing a lawsuit against the NFL for discrimination um, and it, it goes into great detail and obviously I don't have that kind of time to go into it and talk about it but if you want to look it up you can look up Brian Flores, Brian Flores. he was the head coach for the Miami Dolphins uh, and they actually wanted him to tank games which is kind of funny because this is one of the reasons more than likely that Lovey was fired or he was set up to be fired in the first place but he didn't lose the last game which cost the Texans the number one draft pick in this year's draft uh, he played to win and he won and uh, it costs you know fans feel some kind of way about it a lot of people feel some kind of way about it a person has their own personal philosophy and that's how they work they live their life they coach I can't argue with that me personally I ain't never purpose unless I'm playing against my grandchildren or something I'm not purposely losing in something where I'm in a situation competitive uh, you're gonna have to beat me uh, just the way I'm built and then you got to beat me again but that's that so anyway here's what you got to understand there's this push that's saying you have to there's actually a league rule now where when you're hiring for a head coaching position or offensive coordinator defensive coordinator position you have to interview at least I think it's one uh, minority um, 
you have to interview them. Whether you hire them or not is a whole other thing, but you have to interview them. So that's this pressure to have more representation when 72% of your lead is made up of African Americans are blacks. And a very small percentage of your high-end staff, you know, head coaches, front office, GMs, vice presidents, things of that nature is made up of blacks. Obviously, at some point, we're going to start making demands. So what they had to do in order to keep the Players Association, NFL Players Association, content was they had to come up with, okay, we'll interview uh, X amount of minorities each time a position becomes available. Okay. And at some point, you got to start hiring some of those people or they're just going to say it's just um, going through the motions. So what they do is they hire blacks in the most difficult of situations where it's obvious that it's not going to be a winning season this year or next year. And then they put them under the gun and then they fire them for failure to perform. Now, when you fire them initially, everybody's looking going, you fired him after a year. Who can turn around a team that's lacking in talent? You're just outclassed on the field right now. And you can't be expected to play above and beyond. Now, I'll, I'll admit, there are some decisions in the games that I watched the Tex Texans play. Uh, I'm emotionally divorced from, from, from professional sports, period. But I will watch a game. But, you know, and my favorite team is the 49ers. But I don't get excited or angry watching a game. I don't get paid when they win and I, I don't lose money when they, uh, I don't get paid when they win. I don't lose money when they lose. So it's just something to enjoy. I like it because I'm a man and being aggressive is a way we express ourselves with one another. Being competitive is a part of how we are driven and how we are made. So watching it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I, I stopped being emotionally invested in stuff that I don't control. Uh, a long time ago, but I will watch it. But so I haven't watched a whole lot, but I do watch. But in the in the games that I have watched, uh, there were some decisions I watched. Lovey Smith made, and I'm going like, "What are you doing?" But he coaches professional football, gets paid a lot of money to do it. And despite me thinking I know a lot about football, I don't get paid that kind of money to coach. Um, so I have to say, okay, maybe he's in a different position. He's seeing something different that I don't see. And I keep it moving. Again, I'm not emotionally invested. Here's the thing. As they fire these coaches, you can sit up and say now, you know, uh, they fired him too soon. After one year, that's not enough. And you'll make a little noise. Everybody will say something and people will do what Stephen A is doing. Yap, 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 yap. And what will happen is it'll go on and after a while, nobody's talking about it anymore. What they'll do five years from now is they'll pull up these statistics with no context and say, we hire X amount of black coaches and this is the performance level. They're not ready to perform. And then we'll be back to square one talking about black inferiority again. When the truth of the matter is you were set up to fail and we have to be aware of that. So we got to be careful about allowing ourselves to be put into situations where we are going to fail it just in the simple fact that we're not going to be able to produce what the fans want what people think want and even the fans understand to a certain extent you know you got some teams you know you're going like this guy's got three chances i mean you know I, but 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 it is what it is you look at people like jason garrett with the dallas cowboys year after year after year subpar performance as a head coach and i can go and find a bunch of others who got time at the time at the time at the time and I look at a person like uh, Mike Tomlin over at Pittsburgh, black coach, been there 16 years, never had a losing season. This was going to be his first losing season because he started out horrible. There was no way he was going to have a winning season. This motherfucker figured out how to do it. He's a coach. He is a player's coach. He pulled the shit off. He got him into the playoffs. And everybody had already wrote him off as having his first losing season. And they were already talking about whether or not he's going to be there or not. But here's the difference. I will say this. Pittsburgh has probably the best ownership uh, uh, as far as how they handle their players and handle their coaches. These that, that team has had three coaches in over 50 years. Because they have loyalty, they give you a chance to build something, they give you a chance to win. And that is... That is 
how they do it. Okay, so that's that. Stephen A. Smith, you know, went on his little rant about the Houston Texans. Here's my thing. You got a platform. You are the voice on that platform. You gave Kyrie the business back and forth, up and down, in and out for weeks behind posting a link on his Twitter account. Brett Favre hardly got a mention. Uh, Dana, uh, what is his name, from the uh, UFC, slaps his wife in public, hardly mentioned. We drug, not we, but he drug and every everybody else, they drug. Ta Kyrie was like the worst person in the world who's supposed to link. Brett Favre literally stole $5 million, was a participant in the grifting and, and extraction of money meant for poor people to build something for his daughter's school. Uh, something he could have did out of his own pocket or he could have raised the funds. He's got the popularity to do it, but that's the what Roddy Tech. Uh, it was tossed out there a little while, talked about it a little while, but when it's time for someone like us to sit up and say, okay, they're always highlighting what we do wrong. They're always highlighting us like we are just born to do crime and we sit up and we let this shit just float by float by float by float by and then they'll eventually sweep, sweep it under the rug and it'll be angel angel brett in a while nobody will be talking about it. everybody be in this this is the thing that we do overall you need to give stephen a smith you need to give equal or more time to the bull crap that they do yeah, okay, you pointed out what the Texans did, but you know how the game is played. You you can you can rant about that. You can rant about it, but why don't we point out why it's being done? Why don't we point out the depth of the schemes involved and what they plan on doing? This isn't just about the Texans. This is the entire fucking NFL and how they operate and how they exploit the extraordinary talents of black men and pay them fractions of what's being generated by their talent, by their name, by their likeness. And because it's more than black men are, are, are making in any kind of way, you know, I'm talking about professional sports, period. But the average black man can't touch that kind of money. And, 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 and so you got... For, you know, you got that situation. So yes, they're going to take it. Yes, because they're going to be able to do something for their family that the average black man can't. So yes, they're going to take it. And nobody can fault them for taking it unless we create an environment and a mechanism and a space where they can make that kind of money in a way we control it. We don't have a right to ask them not to make it. The idea that we sitting up and asking motherfuckers to sit up and walk away from millions because of what's going on and live a life that we don't even want to fucking live is absolutely ridiculous. So on that part, that's on us. Now, now they're the ones with the money. I'm like, Okay, and, and I've been talking about this And I've talked to a number of players over the years Why don't you guys get together And form a league You know, enough. there, there are enough of you guys now That are close to billionaire status Definitely $100 million status That can pull together investors Your brand is what's carrying the league Basketball and football and create something different. Ice Cube proved that you can create a professional league that people will buy into and get excited about with the big three. You mean to tell me if big names like Steph and, and LeBron and, 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 and these other young cats, Jason Tatum and, and, and all these cats, you can't tell me if they stepped away and say, man, we're going to do our own thing. We're going to build our own thing. It's going to be a player owned. Check it out, player-owned league. And, 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 and then bring in the right people to set up everything, get stadium contracts, get everything done. And people are going to follow the talent. People want to see the best product. You are the best product. You make up 70-plus percent of the talent in each of these leagues. We've got to be better in that. But at the same time, we've got to call a spade. If I've got a platform and this little piece of platform that I have is definitely not first take. 
But I guarantee you, I'm going to sit up here and give you the whole scoop. The NFL is setting up coaches and using black coaches in unwinnable situations to create statistics that down the line will justify them not giving anybody a chance. Not anybody black. And then they'll use the argument that we in some kind of way simply are not capable of coaching at that level, are not capable of thinking, strategizing, building and managing organizations at that level. You don't understand. They've played this card multiple ways in multiple arenas, in multiple areas and aspects of life. It's our responsibility to be aware of how things work. How long have I been telling you guys this? That the reason we lose consistently is because we don't know how things work. Because we are unaware of how things move, operate, and flow. And so we constantly get taken advantage of. We constantly uh, get mishandled. We constantly get misled, misguided, distracted. And then we look up and we're caught in a we're caught in a trap. We're caught in a sling. We're we're looking up and going, how did this happen? It's because we don't understand how things work. We don't look at things. I've been kicking strategies to you for 30 years. I've been writing it in my books. I've been putting it in my lectures. I've been telling you all the plays on every side from finance to school to business. How they are doing it. And it's something that we can resist. It's something that we can offset, but we don't think together. We don't act together. We don't move together. That's a problem. But Stephen A. Smith is Stephen A. Smith. You make some yeps and everybody, you know, I, 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 I'm not finna sing your praises because you sit up and call out the obvious. Hell yeah, that was obvious. And my thing is, Let's talk about why they do it. Let's talk about the not so obvious. Let's fill people in. Your, your handlers aren't going to let you do that. We've already seen what your handlers do. As long as you rake, raking Allen Iverson over the coal, as long as you're going after Kyrie Irving, and you know that's, that's, that's low-hanging fruit. That's easy. That's, they'll let you go all day long. As soon as you offend somebody that don't look like you, you apologize and you suspend it for two weeks and you come back and you quiet as a freaking mouse. I get it. You feeding your family. Don't, but don't pretend you riding like us. Don't pretend you getting down like us. Don't pretend you got skin in the game. You taking some stuff you know and done. You, 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 you trying to present and be and use your persona and your, you know, to capitalize. Do your thing. But don't pretend you're a part of us. Don't pretend you for us because you've had an opportunity to speak up for us and you haven't taken it. Again, you protecting you and yours. Got it. But at the same time, don't sit up there and pretend. Call it what it is. Because see, it's real out in these streets. When you speak truth, they, they shut you down. You speak truth, they shadow ban you. You speak truth, they pull your channel. You speak truth and you look up and you think you're speaking to... 18, 20, 30,000 people and ain't but five or six people getting the notices that you even posted something. But you know what? You keep speaking the fucking truth. Somebody's got to do it. And when somebody's got that kind of platform, you got to go hard in the paint. I'm not saying go out there and do something that get your head chopped off, but I'm sitting up saying throw some shit out there to make people want to go, wait a minute, what are you talking about? There's a way to do it. But no, I, I, I'm not singing the praises of Stephen A. Smith. Because what I'm looking at is my people are suffering. My people are going through things. And even when I look at what's going on with Lovey, Lovey's going to be okay. Lovey is a multimillionaire. He's been paid handsomely for the work that he's done in the NFL over the years. And he's going to be fine if he never works another day in his life. That's not the story or the narrative for 99% of black men. And my thing is 99% of black men that don't have that opportunity are as gifted. We're not as prepared. We're not as focused. We have not yet been uh, adequately uh, encouraged and socialized and and, 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 and direct it so that we can optimize our capacity and do the things that we were designed to do and excel and, and rise and do that. So we always are underneath the hammer. 
I'm tired of it. So we're going to push. We're going to fight. We're going to call a spade a spade. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I hope that I made my point. Again, if you believe in the work that we've been doing at the Odyssey Project for decades, it's you know we're asking for your support. We're asking for you to give. We're asking for you to donate. The link is in the description box, or you can give by way of Cash App. Uh, but we're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to keep building. Um, you giving even supports the work we do on this channel. But uh, my research center, uh, the think tank at the Odyssey Project, Black Men Lead Rite of Passage, the program for our uh, abused females, um, the mental health programs for males and females, so much more. We've been doing it. We will continue to do it. And we're challenging you to step up and be a, a supporter of what we do. We are going to consistently challenge you on that. On that note, look, I'm about to get off of here, get in. I'm going to go spend some time with some guys and some fellas. We're going to talk, chop it up. But I am going to keep doing what I do as long as I breathe. On that note, I'm out of here, you guys. Have a nice